Hey guys, Tammy Treyer, TreyerWilderness.com. What a great day. Had a really good um, morning. Um, today is, we're, we're talking about day 30 of our November 30 day gratefully prepared challenge. I am in my kitchen. Um, I've got some catching up to do. Um, it's our hunting season right now. Today is the last day of our deer season. So it's been a little crazy around here. There's been a lot of schedule shuffling and things going on in order to enable us to be able to get out and hunt and secure our meat for the winter. So I'm standing in front of a very full kitchen sink right now because I wear too many hats this season and it gets really hard to keep up with everything. So I thought I would work in my kitchen while we chat today and go over things and for those of you that are joining me, I would love to know what you are grateful for today, where you're from, and just chime in if you have questions. Um, this is our last day. This thing is fighting with me. This is the last day of our challenge. Um, so hopefully, the I just got cut off here a little bit, so hopefully it's not too painful this afternoon. Um, but because we've had such a good turnout and a lot of good response, and I really enjoy getting to know you guys and spending time and educating this way. Um, so every Wednesday at 10 o'clock, I'm going to shoot for, we're going to see how that time works, okay? 10 a.m. every Wednesday morning starting next Wednesday, I'm going to do a video of sorts and we'll educate on different things. I'll work in my kitchen, we'll can, we'll do all kinds of stuff. So um, put that on your calendar for moving forward because I really feel that we should still focus on what we're grateful for no matter if it's November or not. Every day when we focus on what's good in our lives, our lives are happier, they're more joyful, we're, we're happier people, we're better wives and husbands and mothers and fathers and so forth. So I want to continue to encourage you into the new year to really embrace, you know, looking at the brighter side of life because it just makes our lives so much better, it makes the hard so much easier and so forth. And at the same time, because we're happy and able to function better, we also learn better. So we've covered a lot of different topics. Um, if someone's jumping on and this is the first one you've watched, you can go back and watch all of these. They are on both um, YouTube and on Facebook Live. And um, we went from November 1st to November 30th and talked about preparedness and things to be grateful for. I gave tips on both uh, throughout the videos. And today, I am extremely grateful for an amazing hunt this morning. I was able to get my buck. Today is the last day of the season. The mountain boy is out right now. I hope he comes busting in the house and needs some help. So uh, that might occur, and that's what I'm hoping for. But um, I got a 2x2 two two in Western terms and a four-point buck in Eastern terms, if you're from... I'm originally from Pennsylvania, so I got a four-point buck. But anyway, it was a nice-sized deer. It was a really awesome hunt, and I am thoroughly grateful and comforted by the blessings we've gotten of our meat this year. We've never been so well off with the meat, and we've always had to be a little stingy uh, just to make sure we're making it through winter because we we prefer not to buy meat from the store and we live off of our wild harvested meat. So, uh, we've been very blessed and I'm really excited. I'll be cleaning up some heart and liver uh, this evening. We had heart the other night from Mountain Ben's deer and um, we eat all the things from the animal. Uh, we utilize everything we can from the animal and I'm gonna give you a little tip on hunting. Um, my tactics today were not very ladylike um, and I'll explain. Uh, I saw the... Hey, I'm back. Okay. Uh, sorry, this thing is not playing well with my internet again today. Facebook Live and my internet. But, um, I was saying that my tactics today on my deer hunt were not very ladylike, and I need to explain that. Cool. Good to see you, Chad. And feel free to chime in later. And be sure to check in later and watch the video because your name's going to get mentioned, just so you know. Um, 
Ah, sorry, my internet is not playing nice. Um, so as I said before, um, my hunting tactics were not ladylike. Let me quickly explain. Um, I saw the deer uh, shooting up the mountainside beside me. He was down below and I must have startled him. So he actually ran up the mountainside and ran right in front of me, which was absolutely awesome. He was about 65 yards away from me and he just stood there staring me down. So I wanted to give you hunters, new hunters, um, some tips. For one, you don't want to make eye contact. It intimidates them. Um, so I kept my head low and was looking up underneath my hat and I could see him there. Um, at first I didn't know that it was a buck. His, his rack is not very large. You can go on Instagram later. I'll share a picture. But um, I'm not worried about that because I can't eat the, the antlers anyway. But um, I knew I had a limited chance of getting him because he was staring me down. I couldn't move. The rifle was not up. It was, I had, <laughs> sorry, it keeps going in and out. Um, so in order to give myself an opportunity to keep him there and also to get an opportunity to pull my rifle up, I started to force belt. And I know that sounds really ridiculous you know why would you do that well when you do that and you make that noise um, a deer in rut will think that's another buck or will be in question because it sounds very close so it'll stick around so for probably a minute and a half to close to two minutes I was able to do that and thankfully I got a good air build up from trying to force the crazy things out that I let a pretty good one rip and it it turned just turned its head a little bit and I was able to pull up my rifle, get on him really quick, and all I could see was from his neck up and his head. He was in a lot of garbage. I did see that it was a buck, so I shot him high in the neck. But that's a really great way to keep a deer hanging around. And like I said, you don't want to make eye contact either. Um, I didn't get a chance to clean these yet, but I will be. That is my liver and my heart in there. That's really good eating. We had liver the other night. Great way to prepare liver is to pull the skin off of the, the outer skin. It's like a grayish uh, skin off of the liver so that you're down to the meaty liver. You always want to, when you come back from hunting, you want to put the liver and the heart, cut it up into uh, the sizes you're going to cook it in, uh, you know, that will fit your family's needs. And then put it in salt water. Uh, that helps to pull the blood out and it helps to... Um, preserve it and um, then what I do with my liver is I put it in uh, flour first then put it in some whipped up eggs and then put it back in the flour and bread it. Uh, I put my seasonings in my flour so that when I'm putting that on it's actually seasoning the meat right away so I don't have to also season it in the pan but that makes liver just absolutely amazing. I grew up not caring very much for um, liver uh, unless my mother did it and that was one wild game meat that she did that was very good otherwise it was usually cooked too hard so you want to be okay so with game meat you want to be really careful how you cook your game meat if you cook it um, that it's like a hockey puck it's gonna be gamey you want to just cook it lightly um, not that it's red and necessarily raw and red in the middle but you want to cook it on low heat and that's how we cook all of our meats. And by breading the liver and peeling off that outer layer, um, it's really tasty meat. The heart is really good. We boil that up in um, water with a lot of seasonings and eat it like that. We also have breaded that in the past as well. So there's lots of great ways to do your game meat. Um, canning your game meat is great because you can pull it right off your shelves and utilize it. Okay. Before we lose our opportunity to do this, hey Jane, good to have you joining me. <laughs> um, this has been cutting out on me tonight, so I'm not sure how much longer I can do this. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention that I didn't in yesterday, the last video, yesterday's video, um, I had mentioned about having books and how important books are um, in your preparedness uh, efforts, and I didn't get a chance to mention. Okay, it's back again. So, and having a physical library in your home is really important because if anything ever happens to the internet or to our eye jiggers, as the mountain man calls them, your iPad, your Kindle, your iPhone, whatever, um, you know, you won't be able to dig into your books. 
I love to read as I mentioned in the last video and it's really important to be able to have those physical books at your fingertips to embrace and read and okay sorry guys this is like truly painful it just really keeps cutting out I tried relocating and it's not working so anyway I'm gonna keep pushing on so to add to your physical libraries I told you that at the end of this 30-day challenge I would choose some winners for varying items that we were going to accumulate so I wanted to post these on here and give a shout out to these people because I said that the more active and interactive you were with okay I'm gonna keep jamming through this so Rachel Shetterly is somebody that has been watching and joining in on the videos and she has gotten the happiness project it is a one sentence journal for five years and this is uh, written by Gretchen Rubin and is a really great way to keep your gratitude going so Rachel Shetterly when you watch this contact me and you will receive that for joining in and participating uh, let's see here. I have the Homestead Blessing, The Art of Herbs. This is actually a DVD. And okay, so this DVD is going to go to Evelyn Woods Cox. Again, any of the winners, um, private message me on Trayer Wilderness and uh, provide me with your uh, mailing address and we will get these sent out to you. But thank you for joining in. I also have How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle. Uh, it's our journey and a step-by-step -step look at our lifestyle. And this is going to Daniel Evans. Daniel, thank you for all of your daily posts. Okay, so Daniel, thank you for your daily shares of what you are grateful for. They were amazing. And I hope you enjoy my book and my Trayer Wilderness Cookbook. Our volume one um, has gluten-free and dairy-free cooking in here, sun oven cooking, wood stove cooking, and all of our favorite recipes. And this is going to Shelly Passmore. So Shelly, make sure you reach out to me and thank you so much as well for participating in this. I also have the other book that I was very fortunate to participate in and that is Courage Under Siege. And this is um, Adversity to Victory, which is a great uh, book of encouragement and inspiration. And this one is going to Julie Crouch. So Julie, make sure you message me also. And thank you as well for sharing. And it was just great getting to know you guys. I really, really enjoyed this. And then uh, Chad Vandal, you have, are going to receive Dave Ramsey's The Total Money Makeover. Great book. I think everybody, every family should have this in their house. And the first person who messages me or actually emails me at survive at treyerwilderness.com. Okay, this book here is called Jake and Miller's Big Adventure. It's a prepper's book for kids. And this was written by a good friend of mine, Bernie Carr. So any of you out there with children, the first one of you to email me at survive at treyerwilderness.com will be able to have this for your children or grandchildren. It's a great book. So like I said, it's important to have books in your arsenal and I've just provided some of you with some and I've really enjoyed getting to know you guys and spending time with you and sharing what we do here on our homestead as well as sharing ideas for preparedness for those of you that are new that are watching this be sure to go to treyerwilderness.com slash newsletter and you will receive our preparedness worksheets it's a great way to get started and like I said every Wednesday moving forward at 10 a.m. I will be live here on Facebook live and then it'll get added to the YouTube channel channel as well so that everybody can participate but I'd like to keep this going I really appreciate everybody getting involved and I want to encourage you all to stay grateful no matter what you're going through always look for your blessings it'll help you go through the hard times and it'll make every day brighter when you're focusing on what's good in your life so um, be sure to do that this has been really painful with the Facebook live and my internet not connecting so I'm gonna jump off of here but guys thank you